My name is Samir Khan and I'm part of the product management team for Maple. In this webinar, we'll look at how Maple supports the use of units and dimensions in your calculations. Nearly every quantity an engineer deals with has a unit. In fact, dimension analysis is a fundamental characteristic of engineering calculations. However, most calculation software tools do not understand the concept of units. Unit conversions and consistency checks need to be done manually on paper. This is especially onerous with spreadsheets where conversion factors often randomly appear in a formula, either in a cell on its own or embedded in a formula. This reduces the readability and auditability of calculations, and these conversion factors are often often not documented, leaving you perplexed and confused. So let's look at this. It's a screen grab of an Excel spreadsheet. We're adding a length and a width together. Both have the same dimension, but in this formula we have a magic number here that appears out of nowhere, with no reasoning or explanation. Where did it come from? Why is it there? Now, for this trivial example, any engineer worth their salt should be able to infer what this number is and what it's doing there. It's simply converting from feet to meters. But imagine a far more involved formula with many units and constants in there. This very real problem of understanding an auditing formula with units becomes very difficult very fast. In the worst cases, unit conversion errors can lead to engineering disasters. For example, in 1999, NASA lost a $125 million space probe because one team worked in metric while another worked in US customary units. While your unit conversion errors may not be as disastrous as those suffered by NASA, they're still frustrating, time-consuming, and a source of risk. And every engineer has an ethical duty to reduce risk. Simply by using Maple in your calculations, you eliminate unit conversion errors. You also get a check on the physical validity of your equations. Let's start off by looking at a couple of complete applications. Now, a Maple worksheet can have many different looks, and what you see here is just one particular look for a Maple worksheet. This is a beam design problem. So at the top I have a diagram and a description of the problem, but if I scroll down here I'm extracting physical properties for a standard structural steel shape from a database of physical properties, the AISC Steel Shapes database. All of these properties have units associated with them, so I have a warping constant in inches to the power sixth, I have a length in inch, inches, and if I scroll down to the bottom of the worksheet, oh, by the way, here I have some more parameters that I've defined manually. So I've uh, lengths in fees, the Young's modulus in kips per square inch. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the worksheet, I have my results in inches. Now, using the context panel, I can rescale the results to meters. millimeters or any other consistent set of units. I can also use units in solving in applications which require a, a touch more mathematical uh, power, for example in numerical solving and optimization. So this is a spring design problem. I want to minimize the weight of this spring given a number of constraints. All of my parameters have units associated with them, so my gravitational constant, the density, all have the correct units. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the worksheet, you can see that I'm defining and assembling a number of equations. I feed everything to Maple's optimizer function, and Maple minimizes the mass of the spring while respecting all the necessary constraints and all my results have units associated with them so I have the external uh, diameter of the spring in inches 
as well as the coil damage run inches as well. Now what I can do is change any of the parameters to a different value but still maintaining a consistent set of units. So let's make the applied load 4.5 newtons. If I hit this button, all those changes cascade down the length of my maple worksheet. And all my results, my dependencies, my plots update to reflect the new parameter value and I get new values given to me by Maples Optimizer. Let's move on. So, how can I use Maple to define units? Well, there are several ways to enter units. I usually use keyboard shortcuts when I'm using Maple. I find them a quick and efficient way to uh, drive Maple. So if I type in Control shift u at this point, I get the units placeholder popping up on screen. And at this point, I can just enter in my desired units. Or I can use the unit function Or what I can do is insert units using the pallets here on the left hand side. Now all of these techniques for entering units give you exactly the same thing but they're just different ways of interacting with Maple. So, how do I do calculations with units? First, generally we have to load a unit environment. This puts, in, this puts into place functionality that knows how to calculate with units. So, I'm loading the unit simple calculation environment. And now, if I define a force of 4.5 newtons, let's define an area of 3.4 centimeters squared. If I say the stress is equal to the force divided by the area and evaluate this, Maple resolves newtons over centimeters squared to the correct. SI unit of stress pascals. With a context panel, I can rescale this result to pound force per square inch, or I can enter in a custom unit as well, let's say pounds force per meter squared. And let's add some sensible number formatting as well. So, as you can see, it's very easy to insert units into calculations and to rescale units as well. Now I'd like to explicitly point out a few features that give you some sense of the value that units in Maple offers. What I like about the presentation of units in Maple is that, frankly, they're readable. The way that they're displayed just follows standard accepted guidelines um, we've particularly followed the guidelines published by NIST, the National Institute of uh, Science and Technology in the US. That just makes it easy to understand what this means by context. Um, and units are referred to, referred to by the standard accepted names and are printed in an upright font. You can add or subtract units with the same fundamental dimensions and all unit conversions are done automatically. 
So for example here, I add feet and meters to get the result in meters. If you divide one unit by another, then, if appropriate, the units of the result are reconciled to a simpler form. So here I divide kilonewtons and meters squared to get pascals, and Maple does this reconciliation automatically. So we have programmed some smarts into Maple. If I try to add apples and oranges, Maple warns me. So for example, here I'm trying to add a velocity to a length. As soon as I hit enter, Maple spits out an error. It tells me that I have incompatible units. What I like about this is that it acts as a simple check on the physical validity of your equations. Now, Maple contains hundreds of units organised into several systems. So, for example, here I add powers in kilowatts, horsepower and ergs per second and I get a result in BTU per minute. Something I mentioned earlier is that you can use units in analyses in equations that need to be numerically solved, optimised or integrated, and here are a few examples. Here I'm calculating the a diabetic flame temperature when butane is burnt in air. This is the combustion reaction. In this analysis, we're just equating the heat of the initial reactants, which is known to the heat of the products, which is a function of T, the flame temperature. First of all, I extract thermochemical data from Maple's thermophysical data package. So this includes enthalpies of the combustion products, so nitrogen, oxygen, water and CO2, the heat of formation of butane, I then equate the enthalpy of the reactants and the enthalpy of the combustion products. This equation system needs to be solved numerically. To find T, the adiabatic, adiabatic flame temperature, I specify an initial point for the numerical solver, so 2000 Kelvin. Hit enter. Then Maple finds the adiabatic flame temperature that satisfies the heat balance, so that's about 2380 kelvins and the result comes out with a unit as well. For the next example we're designing a fuel pod with a hemispherical cap, a cylindrical midsection and a conical cap. We want to minimise the surface area while maintaining the volume at a set value, let's say 3 metres cubed. So we have our objective function, this is what we're minimising, this is the surface area of the fuel pod. We want to constrain the volume of the fuel pod to be 3 metres cubed. So I give my objective function and my constraints to Maple's numerical optimizer. I specify initial, uh, initial points for all of the design variables, so the height of the conical cap, the length of the cylindrical midsection, and the radius of the hemispherical cap. And then Maple gives me the minima minimal surface area and the value and the optimized value of the design variables.
So in this final example, we're going to calculate the work done in the isothermal compression of methane. So we're simply compressing methane at 350 Kelvin from a specific volume of 1 meter cubed per kilogram, 2.5 meters cubed per kilogram. First of all, we define an expression that gives us the pressure of methane as a function of the specific volume V. And this again we're doing with Maple's Thermophysical Data Library. If we want to, we can evaluate the pressure at different specific volumes. For example, at a volume of 0.1 meter cube per kilogram, the specific pressure of methane is about 1.79 me megapascals. The work done in compressing methane from 1 to 0.5 meters cubed per kilogram is simply the integral of PdV between these limits. So I form this integral using Maple's uh, uh, math tools and I can evaluate it and the result comes out in kilojoules per kilogram. So as you can see dimensionality is maintained. Now Maple has a number of built-in sources of engineering and scientific data. I've already shown you the thermophysical data library a couple of times. This gives you the thermodynamic and thermophysical properties of solids, liquids and gases as well as arbitrary liquid mixtures. We also have the scientific constants package. This gives you the values of scientific constants and the properties of chemical elements and isotopes. So for example here I'm extracting the atomic weight of sodium and the result is given in kilograms. And on the Maple Cloud we have a package which gives you the properties of standard structural steel shapes as defined by the American Institute of Steel Contractors. Now visualization is important. You can also use units in plots and visualizations. Here's a function that describes an equation of motion, v equals u plus at. I've specified values for the initial speed, u, and the acceleration, a. Then we can plot the velocity this function between a time of 30 seconds and 1 minute. So we're nearing the end of this webinar now. Hopefully everyone understands the value and the scope of Maple's tools for doing calculations with units. There are many more resources on our website including applications, white papers and tutorials. In particular, I'd like to recommend a white paper that we've authored that describes what you should look for in Units Aware Math Software. It's available from the white paper section of our website. And within the product, we have something called the Maple Portal for Engineers. This is a curated collection of tips and techniques for engineers, and it includes many example applications which show you how you can use units in your analyses.